Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's interesting chemistry class, I'm going to show you how to derive the famous henderson hasselbalch equation for weak acids. What is this equation used for? It is simply used to calculate the pH of a buffer solution given the concentration of the conjugate base and the concentration of the acid. What is pH? As we have here, the pH is equal to pKa plus log the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid. pH is simply a measure of how basic or acidic a solution is. For example, at 7.0, it is considered neutral. A pH of 7 or 7.0 is considered neutral. But if it's less than 7, it's considered acidic. If it is higher than 7, it is considered basic. With this formula, you can determine the pH of a solution given the conjugate base and the concentration of the acid. Without further ado, let's get down to business. Suppose you have formic acid, which is HC. OOH. Okay, this is formic acid. And um, if you, this is actually weak acid. If you add water to it, which is H2O, if they react, they're going to give you H3O plus plus HCOO minus. How did I come about this? I'm going to use this expression here to derive the henderson hasselbalch equation for weak acid. Here is a weak acid. It's formic acid. If I add water to it, and water is a base in this very case. This is our base. Here we have our weak acid, or I would say acid in this case. Okay, this is our acid. And here, we have, uh, for example, if this acid, okay, donates a proton to the base, which in this case is water. If this acid donates a proton to H2O, what happens? This acid now becomes a conjugate base, okay? If acid donates a proton to a base, remember, the water acts as a base and an acid. Now, we are reacting water or H2O with an acid. Therefore, it can act as a base. If this formic acid donates a proton to this, what happens? The formic acid now becomes a conjugate base. Right? It gives away pro a proton and in return, it turns into something else. When an acid gives a proton, it becomes something else. And what is that thing is going to become a conjugate base? This is our C base. Okay. Let me write it properly. Like I say, uh, I said initially, when an acid donates a proton, it's going to donate a proton to the base. The acid turns into something else. And what is it going to turn into? A conjugate base right in the same way a base is going to accept the proton an acid is a proton donor while a base is a proton acceptor when the acid donates a base or donates a proton to the base the base accepts it and when it accepts it the base now becomes a conjugate acid okay it accepts the proton and it's going to turn into something else, which is the conjugate acid. Let me say this again. The acid donates a proton to the base. When it donates a proton to the base, it's going to turn into something else, which we call the conjugate base, right? Acid donating becomes a conjugate base. The base accepts, becomes the conjugate acid. That is how it works. In this case, our conjugate acid 
is hydronium ion and our conjugate base is this. Now let's go ahead and uh, work it out. Step one, I'm going to write my uh, Ka, okay, acid dissociation constant expression. Ka is equal to, I'm going to pick the product, okay, it's going to be the concentration of the product over the reactant apart from H2O. H2O is not going to be included in the expression. Here, what do we have? We have H3O plus, the concentration of H3O plus. Okay, the next one, I'm going to pick HCOO minus. Okay, over. Here we have a formic acid, which is H. C O O H. Right. At this very point, we've written our K A expression for this reaction. H2O should not appear in the expression. You only pick your conjugate acid, conjugate base, and your acid. This H2O should not appear in the uh, K A expression. What next are we going to do right now? We are going to introduce logarithm on both sides. We introduce on the left and on the right. Some people like to introduce negative logarithm, but it's still okay. However, if I introduce a positive logarithm, I'm also going to arrive at a negative logarithm over time. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take the log of the left. I'm going to have log of Ka is equal to on the right, I'll have log. I'm going to open my bracket right now and put all these concentrations. Here you have the concentration of H3O plus. The next one is the concentration of HCOO minus over the denominator, which is the concentration of the acid we started with, we have HCOOH, -H. okay, and I'm going to close my bracket. Next up, what are we supposed to do right now? I am going to um, bring out this a little bit and multiply it uh, by everything inside. What do I mean, for example, if you have um, two times um, 3 over uh, 4, for example, 2 times 3 over 4 can be written as 2 times 3 over 4, right? 2 times 3 over 4 can be written as 2 times 3 over 4, something like this. I am also going to uh, bring this out from this uh, line here and put a multiplication sign so that it's going to be quite easier for us to simplify. Let me show you what I mean. Simplifying this up here, we get log Ka is equal to, we have a log, open bracket. Um, this concentration of hydronium is going to multiply everything here. And we shall now have the concentration of H3O plus times um, the numerator, which is the concentration of HCOO minus, okay, over the denominator, which is the concentration of HCOOH. -H. Close bracket. Recall that if you have 2 times 3 as we have here, right, this term multiplying, if you have 2 times 3 as we have here over 4, let's consider this as our 4. This can be written as 2 times 3 over 4, okay? 2 times 3 over 4, which I've done here. If we say that this is our 2, you can see that we've separated them. If I multiply them back, I also get the original expression. Now, why did I do this? I did this because I want to introduce a logarithm property that says if you have log 
a times b this is equal to log of a plus log of b this is a property of logarithms that if you have two logs that are multiplying you can separate them by adding them together it's a logarithm property if you look at this right now you can see that these two are multiplying this h3o plus multiplies everything here therefore we can apply this concept to separate them that's what we're going to do right now since they're multiplying we just say log the concentration of h3o plus plus log the concentration of everything here that's what we're, what we're going to do to separate them let's do that very quickly What's the next thing to do here? I'm going to copy down my log of Ka is equal to separating them. I'll have log concentration of H3O plus. Okay. And we have plus log here we have, I'm going to open my bracket concentration of HCOO minus over the denominator, which is concentration of HCOOH. All right, this is it. Next up, what are we to do at this very point? Let me clean right here so that we can continue. What do we do here? Um, what we're going to do is to transpose. I'm going to transfer this log, the concentration of H3O plus, towards the left, while the log Ka goes towards the right. Let me show you what I mean. On the left, we're now going to have negative log. If this positive log goes over the equality sign, it now becomes a negative. We still have the concentration of H3O plus. This is equal to if the log of Ka goes across, what shall we obtain? We now have negative, negative log Ka. We still have everything here left. We say plus log, open our bracket, the concentration of the numerator. We have HCOO minus, we close our bracket over the concentration of the denominator which you have here as HCOOH. -H. We close our bracket. What's the next thing to do at this point? We need to know that if you have negative log concentration of H3O plus, we have a uh, recall negative log concentration of H3O plus is equal to pH. Negative log H3O plus is equal to pH. Right? What this means is that wherever we see negative log H3O plus, we replace it with its corresponding value, which is pH. Therefore, everything here is not going to be replaced by pH or with pH rather. What about negative log Ka? If you have negative log Ka, this is equal to pKa. Now, we're also going to do the same thing here that wherever we see negative log, log Ka, like negative log of Ka, as we have here, we're simply going to replace it with pKa. On the left, we shall now obtain pH equals pKa. You need to know this relationship so that you not get stuck when you get here. Let's do the replacement uh, up here. Wherever we see um, this, we replace it with pH. Therefore, we shall now have pH 
is equal to where we see negative log Ka, we put pKa. Here we have pKa plus, we have this one left, we have log, open bracket, the concentration of HCOO minus, we close our, our square bracket, over the concentration of H C O O H. Next up, what are we to do at this very moment? Remember that when we wrote our initial expression for the dissociation of formic acid, which we're using to derive this very formula, we say that if you have um, H C O O H right you add water to it which is a base in this case this is going to give you h 3 o plus plus h c o o minus if you look at this properly you will discover that this is our acid here is our base this is our conjugate base and this is our conjugate acid. The H3O plus is our conjugate acid. Now, I'm going to write, recall, okay, um, here we have HCOO minus. This is our conjugate base. Now, the HCOOH, our HCOOH, this is our acid. Therefore, wherever I see HCOO minus, I'm going to replace it with the conjugate base. And wherever we see HCOOH, I'm also going to replace it with the acid. And that will give us what we are looking for. Let me show you. Finally, we have pH is equal to pKa plus log, open bracket. Here we have the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid. Remember that all we did here was to simply replace since this HCOO minus is a conjugate base, as we've seen here, this is our acid. It donates a proton to the base. And when it donates a proton, it changes into something else, which we call the conjugate base. And here is our base. It accepts the proton from this. And when that acceptance it do, is done, it changes into something else, which is called the conjugate acid. Right? That is how it works. Wherever we see HCOO minus, as we have here, we replace it with a conjugate base, the concentration of the conjugate base. And wherever we see HCOOH, which is an, is an acid, we replace it with the concentration of an acid. And this is the famous henderson hasselbalch equation for weak acids. With this, you can calculate the pH, given the conjugate base and the acid. I believe you enjoyed this video and it has helped you in one way or the other. In our next class, I'm going to show you how to derive the same henderson hasselbalch equation for weak bases. So I see you next time, I would encourage you to like, share, and subscribe and so that you will not miss other interesting videos like this. See you in the next lesson. Bye.